Um, good afternoon, my YouTube viewers. It's Crystal here. I'm just here because I wanted to do another code review. This code review is for the September 2022 tabular competition with Kaggle. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to go over the code with you. When I did the code, uh, I was number 23 in the leaderboard but I may have gone down the leaderboard as more people have submitted their data to the competition. But I knew I, was, I didn't have any expectations of winning or coming anywhere close to winning the competition. So I decided that I would do a little bit of analysis on the competition since I wasn't going to win. So we're going to go ahead and go through the um, code review with an analysis of what I did. Here is the um, problem statement of the September 2022 tabular competition. It says the task for this month's competition is a bit more complicated. Not only are there six countries and four books to forecast, but you're being asked to forecast sales during the tumultuous year 2021. Can you use your data science skills to predict book sales when conditions are far from the ordinary? So that's your problem statement. So I created my Jupyter Notebook on the Kaggle website in the directory that the competition question was on. So we're going to import our libraries. We're going to import NumPy SPD, which carries out numerical computations. We're going to import pandas as PD, which carries out um, data processing. We're going to import OS, which is for the operating system. It's going to go on to the operating system and retrieve the files. We're going to import matplotlib, which is a graphics library, and it's going to plot the data points onto a graph. And we're going to import Seaborn, which is written on top of matplotlib, and it performs statistics on the graphics as well. So after we have imported the libraries, we're going to load our files. We're going to use OS to load the files, and we're going to call up the three files of train test and sample submission. And then we're going to read those files and create data frames out of them. So we're going to create a data frame for train. We're going to create a data frame for test. And we're going to create a data frame for sample submission and call it submission. So we're going to look at the train, which has a row ID, a date, a country, a store, a product, and the num sold. And then I decided that what I wanted to do was I wanted to shuffle train in the hope that it would improve my accuracy when I predicted on it. So train equals train dot sample, frac equals one, random state equals 42. And so we can see that train has now been shuffled. Test, we're going to leave test as it is. We can't shuffle it because when we um, submit it to Kaggle, we have to submit it to Kaggle in the format that they want. And submission, this is the format that Kaggle wants when we submit our data to Kaggle. So we're going to analyze the target. This is an analysis of the target. It looks a bit unusual, but there you go. That's an analysis of the target, and we're using Seaborn to do that. The target is the number of books sold. We're going to check for null values. We don't have any null values. We're going to check for null values in test, and we don't have any null values in test either. So we're going to extract the dates from date. So we're going to get the year equals train date dot string uh, zero to four dot as type int and train year equals year and then test year equals test date dot string zero to four dot as type int test year equals year test 
so you can see what the year is. And so what we had done was we had just taken the year out of the date. Now we're going to take the month and we're going to use the same uh, philosophy when we extract the month, except we um, extract five, well, six and seven. So six and seven is what we're going to extract. And then we extract the date, and then so the day is going to be number eight to the very end. So you've got your day. It's going to be 31 days. So now that we've got our day, month, and year sorted out, we're going to do some box plots. And this is part of the analysis. So the, we're going to do a box plot or a whisker plot on the year that the books were sold. So you can see that I think most books the bulk of the books were sold in 2020, but in 2018, you've got quite a few outliers, and you don't have the outliers in 2020 that you had 17, 18, and 19. Now we do a box plot of the month, and so you can see most of the books were sold in December, which means that they probably wanted to buy Christmas presents. Now we do the date, and you can see that this is the date that um, they did. And I can't really quite make out what the highest date is. I don't know if it was the 29th and the 30th and the 31st had the highest. Well, the 28th, the 29th, the 30th, and the 31st had the highest value of books sold. Now we're going to check the country. So you want to see how many books were sold according to the country. And so you can see um, Belgium and Germany. Well, Germany really had the most books sold, but Belgium was a close second. So now you want to see the shops that they were sold in. So there were two shops in Kaggle Rama and Kaggle Mart. And Kaggle Mart sold the most books. They sold more books than Kaggle Rama. So now what we want to do is to see the product. So see which book, which product sold the most books. And it says Kaggle for Kids, One Smart Goose. Looks like it sold the most books. So now we're going to define our target. So your target equals your train. Num sold, which is the number of books sold. And now what we're going to do is we're going to combine our train and our test. And we're going to drop num sold. So combi equals train dot drop num sold x is equals one dot append test. And so you've got the train has shuffled and the test isn't shuffled because we can't shuffle train the test because that's not what Kaggle wants to see when you submit your work to be graded. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use SKNERM's ordinal encoder to encode all the object files, all the object columns. So now all of the object columns are encoded. So everything has been converted to a numeric value. Now we're going to drop row ID and date because that's not necessary. And now we define our X and our Y values. So Y is your target. X is a comb B, um, 0 to the length of train. X test is comb B, the length of train to the end. And what I might do is I might go through and I might try to... Um, normalize the data and see if my uh, accuracy improves if I normalize the data. So 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to split our train set into training and validation sets. And now we're going to select our model. And when we select our model, we're going to use XGBoost. And we had 99% accuracy. And when we print on, when we predict on our validation set, we had 98.6% accuracy. We check our error. We have RMSC of 14, which isn't too bad. And then we check our data frame. So we compare the actual values against the predicted values. And then now I plot it on a graph, and you can see how the actual values are comparing to the predicted values, and it looks pretty good. Now we're going to predict on x test. So we predictions equals model dot predict x test predictions equals predictions dot s type int and then predictions. So now it's an integer. Submission num sold equals predictions. Submission dot two csv bracket submission dot csv index equals false. Submission equals pd read csv submission csv submission. So now we've got all of our submissions. And then whenever I saved it and um, submitted it to Kaggle, you can see that I had a public score of 11.49870. No. So what I think I'm going to do when I finish this video is I think I'm going to go through and I'm going to normalize the data. And I'm going to see if the accuracy improves when I normalize the data. So um, I make all of my um, notebooks available to people. So you can check on Kaggle to look on my notebook to see if normalizing the data improved the accuracy. Maybe it did. Let's see. So I'm going to conclude my video right now. So if you like, I would like to thank my subscribers for supporting my channel. If you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. And I look forward to making more code reviews for you in the future.